in my defense, she asked me if I was popular. I did not offer that. So I figured out a way how to do this uh, with in two seconds for you, because this is actually one of the first times that I'm talking about my favorite campaign. Uh, as you know, we all are fortunate to bring our full selves to work every day, and I am no exception to that. And this campaign that I'm going to talk to you about, I built for and with a really special little guy named Hunter Smith. So this, oh, I don't want you to see my husband's whole Twitter screen, but this little guy in the picture, this is Hunter Smith. So first, I'll tell you who I am. So I'm Maya Anika Smith. I am the executive director of Lady Gaga's Born This Way Foundation. Oh, sorry. But for the purpose of this talk, uh, I'm just a parent who leveraged every platform that I had access to in order to build a kinder and braver world for my babies. Hunter has a little sister named Logan. I'm fortunate to have two kids. We live in the Bay Area of San Francisco. So my mission in life and at Born This Way Foundation is to build a kinder and braver world for my babies and for all of our babies. How many people in this room have kids whose futures they care about, whether they're yours or otherwise? Okay, cool. Awesome. Um, so Born This Way Foundation, our mission, building a kinder and braver world. We were built out of the personal experiences that Lady Gaga had growing up. Too often when you're young and you're different, it's viewed as a liability instead of an asset. And she endured endless meanness and cruelty for being different. She was clear from a very early age that if she was to make it in her career, she would use her time, her treasure, and her talent to make sure that young people didn't just survive their lives, but that they thrived. So we have three big goals at the foundation. First is to make kindness cool. The second is to validate the emotions of young people around the world. And the third is to eliminate the stigma surrounding mental health. When we presented these big goals to her, I said to her, we're going to uh, reduce the stigma around mental health. And she said, try again. And I stood up taller and I was like, we're going to reduce the stigma around mental health. And she said, try again. And I realized what she was saying to me. And the third time I said, we're going to eliminate the stigma around mental health. And she said, that's better. So this summer was not very productive for me. And it's all this little guy's fault. This little guy started kindergarten on August 21st. And for those of you who have had the experience of having your heart walk around outside of your body, it's literally all you can think about. He's going into this new environment. How can I be sure that people are nice to him? How can I be sure that in the 10 feet between his classroom and the bathroom, something awful doesn't befall him as I would think about every night before I went to bed. How do I make sure that he is met with kindness and shares kindness in every way? And so he and I would have a lot of conversations with his dad, Dave, and his spicy little sister, Logan, who's not on the kindness train yet. Um, <laughs> We would talk about what does it mean to build a kind community and how can we at Spring Hill Elementary bring that kindness? So every staff meeting, we would share our to-dos every Monday morning. And I'd say, listen, guys, I know I run this thing, but I'm not going to get much done because Hunter's starting kindergarten. So whether it was because they wanted me to get more work done or because they truly understood the emotion of having your baby go into a new environment, Cynthia Germanata, the founder of Born This Way, her, her Lady Gaga's mom, said, take this opportunity and create a platform. Make it bigger than just what's happening at Spring Hill. Use the experiences that you're having as a parent, the platforms that you have access to, and build something. So out of the conversations that I had with little, this little guy, I was appointed the kindness coordinator at Spring Hill Elementary School, and we launched Be Kind 21. Be Kind 21 was focused on the idea that kindness isn't this transactional one-day thing. On random acts of kindness, if you go around and do a lot of frenetic kindness, the world isn't now constantly a kinder place. It's a habit we need to cultivate. And so what we did at Spring Hill was we created a 21-day calendar for the parents, the teachers, and the students so that we could cultivate a practice and a habit around kindness. And then we put it up on the Born This Way Foundation website. 440,000 people joined Hunter and participated in Be Kind 21. The global offices of Kate Spade, the global offices of uh, Oath, the entire city of Anaheim, California, and many, many, many more. Um, we result, we, this campaign resulted in over 8 million acts of kindness in this 21-day period because of this little guy and the, the frantic uh, 
feelings of a mom. So my job as a mom and as an executive director is to ask myself about the unmet needs in the world and go and fill them for my babies, for everyone else's babies. And so I'm so excited to have the opportunity to share with you this ex oh baby. <laughs> <laughs> I can't talk anymore. <laughs> um, uh, so, so I want to invite you to join us on our next campaign. So we just launched a campaign called Multiply Your Good. So the idea that one person can change the world, I'm sure everybody in this room believes it, but in this negative uh, landscape, in, in an in an everyday daily barrage of overwhelming tragedies, sometimes it's hard to believe it. And so what Born This Way Foundation is doing from November 13th to December 21st is we launch the Multiply Your Good campaign. We will match every dollar donated. We will match every act of kindness pledge. We'll, act, we'll match every hour uh, that you spend volunteering at a local nonprofit. So if you log your commitments at the end of the year at bornthisway.foundation, hashtag, or backslash multiply your good or on social media at hashtag multiply your good. Uh, we'll show you the multiplying effect that good and kindness can have. It's funner done in community um, and we invite you to join us. So I want to wrap up my quick fire talk by just going back about the foundation. So kindness is often viewed as this nice to have mushy feeling, right? Instead of this evidence-backed science that has transformative um, benefits on us as individuals and collectively. So I want to share just one story about the urgent life-saving power of kindness that you can take with you. Uh, we often talk about what, how do we know when we're going to build a kinder and braver world? How do we know? And I do work that I'm actually never going to know that I'm successful at, right? We lose 800,000 people every year who die by suicide. I'm not going to know about the people who don't commit suicide. I'm only going to know about the people that do. So it's a really interesting and difficult set of metrics that keeps me waking up every morning to do this work. And I hope to spend the rest of my life doing it. And it's because of stories like these that I do this work. So I live in right outside of San Francisco. Anyone else from California? I know the ISKIN team is awesome. I, next time, we'll just, let's stay home, guys. It's so cold. Um, so, so if you were contemplating suicide where I live, where many of us live, you might go to the Golden Gate Bridge. Um, far too many people jump off the Golden Gate Bridge every year. They're trying to do a lot of improvements to the, gate, to the Golden Gate Bridge structure to try and prevent that. But I had the immense privilege of meeting one of the few men who survived a jump off the Golden Gate Bridge. His name is Kevin. Maybe some of you have heard his story. But he told me what he went through that morning when he decided to end his life. And so he was living in the mission. Um, he'd been struggling with a whole host of issues for a, a long time. And he had decided that that was the morning that he was going to end his life. And we know from research that when you make a plan to end your life, that's the hardest thing to walk back. So we do everything that we can to get, uh, get that from not happening. So this young man had decided to take his life, and he had to take three buses to get to the span of the Golden Gate Bridge. So he gets on his first bus. It's a crowded commuter bus. And he has this like nagging feeling inside. He doesn't want to live anymore, but he's not sure that he wants to die. And so he makes a bet with himself. He says, if anyone on this bus asks me how I am, just like, turns to me and, and strikes up a conversation with me. I'll take it as a sign, and I won't do it. And so he's just casually standing room only on this bus. Nobody asks him how he is. That's fine. I don't think he fully was expecting anyone to, but he was opening the possibility for someone else to be strong enough to save his life. He gets on the second bus that's going up Van Ness into the marina, and he's starting to feel a little bit he, he's starting to get a little bit nervous. He's saying, I, I don't want to do this, but I know that if I get to the bridge, I'm going to do this. If anybody on this bus smiles at me in a way that I know there was a smile made for me when they saw me connected with me and wanted to share a smile with me, I won't do it. So he's looking around, trying to make eye contact with the people on this bus, uh, starting to get a little bit agitated. And people, for a whole host of reasons, whether they're on their phones, listening to podcasts, reading newspapers, nobody's connecting with him. Some people are starting to actively avoid him. He gets on the last bus in the marina. Nobody, so nobody, nobody 
um, smiles at him on this bus. He gets on the last bus. It's a short bus the scan the, to the span of the Golden Gate Bridge in the marina. And he says to himself, he's now in crisis. He's crying. He's visibly upset. He said, if anyone on this bus looks at me, if anyone on this bus just looks at me with warmth, with recognition of my humanity, then I won't jump off this bridge. I will take it as a sign that I exist and I matter in this world and that I should keep going. Nobody on this bus looks at him. Now people are actually turning away from him, trying to avoid him, looking at their phones, pretending to scroll different things. Nobody on this bus looks at him. Everyone actually turns away from him. So he says, okay, this is, this is what it's meant to be. So he walks to the, in, onto the bridge to the mid-span. He feels a tap on his shoulder. And so he whirls around. He's crying at this point, about to take his own life. And a woman in these big sunglasses says to him, will you take my picture? And she, to this man who is weeping, hands her phone to him, gets up against the side of the Golden Gate Bridge, poses, allows him to take her picture. He hands her back her phone and in front of her jumps off the bridge. So I already told you that he survived. And he says that the moment he went off the side of the bridge, he was like, I don't, I, what am I doing, right? But I tell that story because we've all been on both sides of that story, right? We've all been those people for very good reasons that are way too busy to notice the people on the BART or on the DC Metro or on the bus or on our walk to work, right? We're fighting with our husbands, we're late to school, we're running to do drop off, whatever the reason, we don't notice the people around us. But we've all at one point or another been those people who are in desperate need of human connection, of recognition, and of humanity. And so kindness isn't a nice to have mushy feeling, caring about those around you, noticing them, reaching out to them, and doing an act in service to someone else without the expectation of anything in return isn't just good for us, good for him, it can hopefully save a life. So thank you so much for inviting me to talk about Born This Way.